Okay, guys, so I'm excited today. Um, Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters just got an update with a feature that I've been waiting for, which I think now makes the facet filtering um, with Jet Engine in bricks uh, something that's extremely viable. And it does require a little bit of working out, but um, don't they all? So here's an example here. I've just got some Faker Press uh, blog posts here in a query loop. Very basic styling. And I've got, what have I got there? 12 of them on the screen. And then there's a load more button down here. And once this load more button comes into view, if I click it, I get the next lot of items. Click it again, I get the next lot of items again. So that's the load more that was missing from the initial release of Jet Smart Filters being compatible with bricks. So that's there now. They have still missed one thing. So when you, all you do is to do, um, to have your load more is when you add your pagination um, for your uh, query loop. Uh, this is a, uh, a Jet Engine pagination um, in the control. So I disable the items. So that's the numbers. So that's the page numbers. You can leave those here if you want. You can disable the previous and next buttons and just enable the load more and put whatever you want for the label on that. And this doesn't seem to work either. I'm not sure what the deal with that is, but functionality it works what it doesn't have that other load mores would often have is that infinite scroll facility so when this load more button comes into the viewport to automatically trigger it you can have that as an icon you can have it as an arrow down whatever you want uh, and it should trigger the next set of uh, items as soon as that comes into the viewport that's not a feature that they've implemented, but that's okay. We can get around that. So I've actually created some code to do that. And this is just output on the screen. If I execute that code and save this, come back to our demo page here, just refresh that. And if I scroll now, as soon as that button comes into the full view, I've got it set to the full view. So 100% of the view, it triggers the load ball. So let's go down again. As soon as it gets to there, it triggers the load more, and it'll keep doing that until it hasn't got any more to load, which is exactly what we want our infinite scroll loading to do. So this is working. I'm happy that it's working. It does require a little bit extra code to get that part of it working with the infinite scroll, uh, but without that, it still works okay. So what I'm going to do is show you how I've actually created this. And to do that, I'm just going to get rid of my container altogether here. It's going to add a new container. And we're going to start from fresh up here. So inside that container, this is where I'm going to put my blocks. So heading back over to the first thing we need to make this work well is a query. So we're going to head to our back end here. And in the, uh, I should say, sorry, I've got a bunch of posts which I just created with uh, Faker Press. I just go to post. It's just random uh, Laura Mipson posts which I created here with uh, Faker Press. I think I've got about 80. I have I've got 80 items. Uh, so in Jet Engine, what we're going to do is create a query. So you're in the query builder. I've just told it to query all of the posts. This is the power that you have too when you integrate this rather than just use the basic bricks query loop, which is fine for a lot of things. This is a really powerful query builder. You can do so much more with this. You've got all sorts of additional ordering. Um, if you've got a password on some posts, you can add those to it. Uh, meta queries, tax queries, date queries, posts and page queries. You know, if it's got a particular parent, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot you can do here. And, and you can use tokens as well, which I'm not going to go into. But Jit Engine has tokens that make queries even easier. Uh, you can query comments. Uh, pagination, we've just told it we've got 12. Um, items on a page. You can put some offsets on there to start if you want to. Uh, we're getting author queries. You can do an awful lot here. And the other thing you can do is you can set relationships up. So if I create a little relationship between post types, we can actually query the uh, items related to a parent or, uh, or a child relationship as well. So example of that might be, for example, if you've got a travel agent and that travel agent manages some tours, uh, when you click on the travel agents bio, uh, it can show the tools that are related to that uh, travel agent. So you get all that functionality built into this query builder.
We've done a simple post query with 12 items per page, and I've just called this um, a query, uh, da, 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 da. we just call it posts. Uh, sorry, uh, what's the name we gave it? Go back here. Can't actually tell from there. Uh, I did, I just called it posts. <laughs> Should have been a bit more creative there. And you have to give it, so that you can use all the filtering, we have to give it an ID. So I've just called it test-query. And that's pretty much all I need to do to prepare this. All right, now the next thing we want to do is look at our um, page and create our layout. So I'm going to do a grid layout here. And I'm just going to say 20 pixel uh, in there. And we we'll put repeat of, uh, let's do four columns of min max. 01FR. Okay, so we've got a four column grid layout. And then I'm going to add a block inside there. So my first block, I'm going to turn that block there into a query loop. Simple query loop. What query do we want? We want to use our jet engine query builder. Okay, whoops. Uh, yep, that's on there. Which query do you want? We've only got one we call posts, which one we just created. And we want to tick this is filterable so that we can filter this with uh, Jet Smart Filter. So let's, what do we call it? Test query. I'm going to copy that there. Just going to put that there. And that is done. Okay. Now let's start putting some stuff inside that box. So let's maybe put a featured image. Oh, so what's my, what's my builder doing here? They go in there? No. There we go. So it's in there. We're going to select, whoops, we don't want to select an image. We want to use the dynamic data of a featured image. And we want it to be smaller than that. Let's do our 600 size here. We're going to set it to uh, cover. I haven't set any um, aspect ratios on this. There's nothing in the UI for that. You can do this easily through uh, custom CSS. So there's our featured image. Uh, let's stick a title underneath it. Let's make it a heading. And we'll make that a heading three. It already is. Uh, and let's select our post title. There'll be a title there. Go okay, there it is there. And we might actually limit the actually I'm not gonna bother. We're just gonna leave that as it is. Okay, so there's a very simple layout with some posts, and then this pagination. I'm gonna actually just delete that so I can add that back in there. So I'm just going to delete that. I'll show you where I find that. So if I go into my uh, pagination machine to scroll all the way down rather than searching so you can see what's here so in the out of my jet smart filters we've got all of these filters here which you have to define in jet smart filters first but there's a pagination here actually i think it's under the jet engine jet engine jet engine looking for it there we go pagination under jet, jet smart filters so we're going to drag our pagination here and that's just going to give us our basic pagination settings so in here we want to set our general we want it to be for the bricks query loop so the jet engine is when you're using their listing grids which i'm not going to use because i prefer using the quick with the query builder so the loop builder and bricks so you go bricks query loop i'm going to grab that id again so test query and put that there so we've given our query up here where we said that it is filterable, we've told it it's a test query, which is from our query here, query builder here. And when we've set up our pagination here, we've told it's a big bricks query loop, and we want that to control the test query. Okay, by default, we get the previous next, all these items as well as a load more. So I'm going to go to controls. I'm going to turn off the items, so these numbers. I'm going to turn off my previous and next. I'm just going to leave that load more there. Now... Um, based on this, this is going to work. There's a couple of things I need to do, but I'm going to just look at this here and refresh. Okay, so there we go. So we've got 12 items on the screen. So that was because we told it in the pagination here that we wanted 12 items at a time. If I scroll down, I can see my load more. 
if I click my load more, it's going to get the next 12. Click the load more, it's going to get the next 12. So really, really simple facet filtering for grabbing you know, blocks of 12 each time. Now, what would be really good is like in Elementor, there's a option here for it to be a um, uh, infinite scroll. Uh, so it just automatically loads when the button or the icon or whatever you use comes into view. So we're going to make that happen. Now to do that, I've created some custom code here and I'm targeting this load more ID. So I'm going to have to go grab that load more, go back to our query, uh, sorry, our pagination here and just edit the ID of that and make that load more. Whoops, absolutely delete the power. So we're going to call this one load more. So that's the load more item. And then what we can do is we can target that load more. So all this is doing, we're using what's known as an intersection observer, which is a built-in browser API. And all that is doing is it goes, root of null means it's the entire window from the top, bottom, left and right. So we're not setting up a scroll window that we're checking within. It's the whole browser viewport. Uh, root margin of zero means that we, as soon as it enters into anywhere on that is where we're testing for. Um, you can also set a margin of, and, and I think in pixels, a percentage that you have to use for a section observer. So you can say when it's a certain percentage or a certain number of pixels from the bottom here, um, then we want it to trigger. We just leave that on zero. So, so and our, a threshold of one means it has to be entirely within that uh, scroll window. Otherwise, it doesn't trigger. Uh, if you set it to 0.5, only half of that has to be within there to trigger. So we're just going to leave it on one. And then we create an intersection observer with a callback using those options. So our callback is going to call in view callback. So this function up here uh, using those options. Right? And then we just have to tell the observer to observe our load more button. Right? That's as simple as it is. And as soon as that load more button comes fully within the window, it fires this in view callback, calls this function here. We get the entries because you can have more than one element registered. So we want you get an array, and that's the actual observer itself. So we can do some stuff with that we want to. But we know we only got a uh, ID we're using, so it's only the one entry. So we're just going to get the first one. So the entries open at zero gives us the first one. There's a property called intersecting. So intersecting means it's inside that scroll window. If that's not set to true, then it's not inside the scroll window. Simple as that. If it's inside the scroll window, we're going to get the target, which is the actual uh, button that triggered the uh, this uh, event. We're going to look for the uh, JetSmart filter pagination link, which is actually a link that's inside of that. You can't see it here. There's wrappers and wrappers and wrappers, um, and that's inside of there. And if the link exists, we're just going to tell it to click it. So simply, as soon as this comes with inside that window, fully inside the window, call our own view callback. It's inside the window. The links there you can click it simple so that's automatically clicking just because it came inside the window so we're going to save that um, now the in bricks is a really cool little thing um, you could when you just put a code element on the editor it just echoes out the code to the uh, browser um, you've got a little switch here which is execute code now you do have to in your uh, brick settings you have to go into the builder access and you have to enable code execution for whichever user levels you want. I always advocate only ever do this for administrator. And then when you enable that, that gives you the ability to flick the switch so the code will execute rather than just print out on the screen. And because we're not going to target this here, we don't need a wrapper. We're not going to use any other JavaScript or CSS or anything to target this. So we don't need a wrapper. It's going to put it straight onto the document. So that's where you go. There's our, our document there. So let's have a look at this in action now. So if I do an F5 now, scroll down. As soon as the label button came into view, it just did the next 12. Here we go. You scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It's next 12. Next 12. So there it is working. So I was waiting for this to work. It does work. It's absolutely beautiful the way it works. Uh, there's only that one missing feature that um, you know you can simply write a bit of code to overcome anyway. Um, so the pagination with load more is finally working. I'm really happy with this and I think that this is something that uh, 
there's definitely going to be my toolkit from now on. So I hope you like uh, this, uh, what I've done with this, and oh, I certainly do. So thanks for listening.